What's going on everybody, it's Carmine from Barmine Tech and today I'm going to be going over what I think are the must do things on any new Ubuntu machine. The idea is the same for any of the other Linux flavors, but I'm going to be covering Ubuntu desktop and Ubuntu server. Uh, Ubuntu server is the main flavor that I use for pretty much everything in my videos. And I made a couple with Ubuntu desktop, so I'm going to cover that too because people use it. Let's get right into it. So if you take a look over here, you see I have a new Ubuntu machine and a new Ubuntu server machine. These are both fresh VMs that I just spun up, and if I actually go over to the Ubuntu desktop machine, you can see it's over here, I haven't even logged in yet, so let's log in. Oop, wrong password. I'm so used to the one password I use for all my other VMs. So let's get this logged in, and then I also have the Ubuntu server machine up, so I'll work with that as well in a minute. So you can see it wants me to sign in. I don't really want to because I'm not going to be using this for very long. It's just a test machine. Uh, we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to turn this off. Keep going and then we're all done. So now we have a fresh Ubuntu desktop machine. And the first thing that you're going to want to do, no matter what, is going to be updating it. So let's get that going. So in the desktop machine, this is for the Ubuntu desktop. It's usually going to have a pop-up almost immediately when you log in saying that there's an update. You could do it through the GUI or you could do it through the terminal. I like to do it through the terminal just because I find it easier. So I'm going to just open up the terminal and then I'm going to do sudo apt update. And then I'm going to enter my password. And then it's just like when we had updated on a Ubuntu server machine. It's going to start pulling the latest releases and we'll let this work and we'll come back. So now it pulled the updates, so now we'll do the upgrade, so we'll do sudo apt upgrade attack y. See it says there's 350 packages to be updated, so we'll let this work. And while this works, we'll go over to the Ubuntu server machine. So here we are on the Ubuntu server machine, and I haven't updated this machine yet either, so I'm just going to do a clear. So we'll do sudo apt update, enter that sudo password again. Now these are two different machines, so don't get confused by that. One is the server machine, one's a desktop machine, but they are still running off the same server. And on this one I have 93 packages, so I'll just update those real quick. So I'll do sudo apt upgrade tackle y. Now anytime I make a new Ubuntu machine, or really any machine, the first thing I do is update it, whether it's Windows or Linux. I know usually I'm in a rush, so I try not to, but it's really good to get those first updates in on both styles of machine, whether it's desktop or server, because you're going to get the latest versions from the repositories that the OS is using. So even if during the install it says it pulled updates, like I just installed these machines, there's still updates to be done. On the desktop machine there was 350 packages, it pulled updates during the install, so it missed quite a bit. So to make sure that you have the latest version is really important, because then there's going to be features that might not work properly as you start to work on these machines. So I'm going to let these install and then we'll be right back. The Ubuntu server machine is processing the updates and now it's asking us what we should restart for services. I usually just leave the default services. If there's anything in particular you know you need to restart then you can select it. I'm just going to hit tab and then OK. And then it's going to finish doing the updates. Alright so now you can see that the Ubuntu desktop machine is all finished updating. You can run the commands the same way you do on the server machine, so if it's, you know, first time you're using the Ubuntu desktop machine, still update just like how you use server, so it comes in really nice. Like I said, I like using the terminal just because it it's easier, it's simpler, it's what I'm more comfortable with, so I normally use the terminal when I need to update it. And now you can see it wants to restart because it just applied all those updates, so we'll do that now. The next thing I like to do on an Ubuntu desktop machine is actually R enable RDP. So Linux doesn't really use RDP, it uses like a version of VNC, but from a Windows machine you can RDP to it. So we are going to, because as you can see I'm in a VNC console through Proxmox, so I do want to change this, so I can RDP into it, so I'm going to open up the applications again. We're going to open up the terminal. Now I've already done this updates, so now we should be all set to just install XRDP. So we're gonna do sudo apt install XRDP. Enter my password. Hit yes. Now it's gonna install the XRDP package. So if you're not familiar, XRDP is the package used to RDP into Ubuntu. So we do sudo system 
cuddle status xrdp. Um, okay, I didn't like that. Let's try sudo system cuddle status xrdp. There you go. So that one I liked. That must have had a typo. Uh, let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger so it's easier to read. And you can see that the XRDP service is running, so that means now that we should be able to RDP into this machine. When you go to RDP into the Linux machine for the first time, make sure that you're signed out of the VNC terminal. If you're not signed out, it's not going to let you RDP in, it's just going to show you a black screen. Um, so make sure that when you're all done in here, you click the sign out button, and then you can go RDP from your Windows machine or whatever other terminal you're going to use. So now I logged out of the Ubuntu machine in the VNC. You can see right behind here, this is me logged out. I just opened up the normal RDP connection on Windows. I put in the IP for the machine I'm trying to connect to. A connect is going to give me the warning that I can't verify. That's fine. You can check this off if you want. And it won't give you this pop-up anymore. So I'll click yes. And then you're going to see we're going to get like this VNC displayer. So this is how Windows connects to Linux machines. This is how I've done it for quite some time. And it works nicely. So you're going to use the default. It's going to just give you xorg. You're going to leave that. And then you can just put in your username and password. And then click connect. And you can see I'm into my Ubuntu machine. It's full screen. All my stuff shows. I have... Oh. See everything shows. I have my activities. It gives me down here on the bottom. Firefox. I have all the stuff I need. So now I can actually RDP instead of having to use the VNC machine. Um, and I can connect to this anywhere in the, in the network. So if I'm on my laptop, I can connect to this machine. If I'm using one of my VMs, which I am right now, I can connect to this machine. So it's really nice. Instead of having to VNC in, I can just RDP in off of any of my Windows machines, which is probably what you're going to be using by default. The next one I will talk about is now for accessing your Ubuntu server machine. So you can see I'm back in the Ubuntu server machine. And SSH is already enabled. You usually enable it during the install. But if you're on like a public facing box or you're maybe you're on a VPS, you probably want to change that SSH port. So I'm going to show you how to do that now because this is a must do if you're on a new machine like a VPS or anything that's public facing. If you leave it as 22, you're very liable to be compromised. If somebody does a port scan or anything like that, they'll probably find that 22 is open. And they'll be able to try to brute force into that machine. So I'm going to show you how to change that real quick. So to change it, we're just going to go over to where you use Nano and we're going to Etsy. We're going to do nano slash etsy slash ssh plus sshd config and then here we're going to come down and we're going to see that port 22 is commented out so you just remove the comment and then you can change it so you can change it to 2222 or 3567 or anything you really just make sure you don't change it to a port that's already used so what i usually like to do is find the list of the ports that are well used and from there, I will use, you know, stuff like in the high ranges that isn't a commonly used port. So, like, don't use 123, 53, 69, 21, any of those ports because those are all commonly used ports. And they're going to interfere if you use those on your network. So, like, if I gave this machine 53 as the SSH port, it's going to affect the DNS. So, don't use something like that. Make sure you use something that's not too common. So, like, 3,567 or 4,102. Stuff like that should work. Um, I think 4,000 should fit in the port. I think it's 35,000 ports, so we should have plenty to use from. But uh, you can change that, and then you can go that way. I'm just going to leave this how it is because this is a private machine. But this is a must when you start any new Linux machine, especially if it's public facing, to change the port. So then you would just close that out. So now, after you change that SSH port, you just need to do a sudo system cuddle restart SSH and it helps if I type cuddle right so now you can see pseudo system cuddle I did, ran the restart for SSH it's going to restart the SSH service and then we do pseudo system cuddle status SSH you can see SSH is running so now you can close out the PuTTY terminal and you can make sure that you can still connect so if I do new session and if I was able to go in here now you would have to make sure that you would type in your new host so let's say it's 192.168.50.3 or 5 um, make sure that you change the port to whatever you just changed so if you did 2222 make sure it's 2222 
if you did three five six seven make sure you change the three five six seven in the terminal because then it won't be able to connect you need to go over to the port that you just set for it to listen to so this is how you would do it after you just change your ports and then putty's cool because you could save it in there so you can come over here and let's say i want to save this connection i can name it so i'll just give it bar mine tech and then you could click save and it's going to save that connection in the putty window so let's say if i change it you can see i have a different config i save the bar mine tech config and in here it has the new config with my port number so i do this with my vps's because i don't always remember the ports i set so this is an easy way to do it the next thing i like to do is change the root unit password for the root user account so to get into the root account we can do sudo attack i now we're going to be root and then from here we just do password and then we can change the root password So this is good because if you are, let's say, you know, you have multiple accounts, so you have your account, then you have the root account, and if it's a public machine, you don't want somebody to be able to access the root account, then they have full access to the whole machine and could compromise or do whatever. So if we do sudo root, I can enter my new password and connect to the root account. So this is a good step to always do on your Ubuntu machine. Your account that you're signing in with already has a different password, so it's probably good. This is good if you're in, you know, a, a home, you don't want somebody to be able to access the machine, or if it's a public machine like a VPS or something like that. Changing the root password is important, so if somebody does find the machine, they don't brute force into the root account. We're going to do this on the Ubuntu desktop machine because changing the credentials is an important step, so let's do that next. It's going to be similar on the Ubuntu desktop machine, so we just come back into Applications again, and we can come to Settings. And I know we set the password when we made the machine, so if you want to change it again, you can do it in here. Or if you want to change the root password, we can just come in again to the Applications, Terminal. And then here we're going to do sudo attack i. We're going to enter our password for our account. Now we switched into the root one, and then we can just do password. And then you can enter the password. Enter the password again. They don't match, so we'll enter it again. And then we can see we updated our password successfully. So now if I exit and I'm back in my Carmine account, I can do su. And then we can enter the password we just set for the root account, and we have the root password again. So it's the same thing now if you want to log in as the root in the Ubuntu desktop, we can log out. And this might kick me from my RDP. That's fine. So we're going to do connect, and then I'll do root. And then I'll put in the new credentials I just set, and then we'll lock in. And you can see that I logged in. It's the first time I've logged in with a root account, and it's actually telling me up here I logged in as a privileged user. So I'm in an account that has access to everything on this machine. So we would sit here and we would finish setting up the machine for the user. So I'll just click next through this and uh, finish this all out. That's how we would set up the root account for the Ubuntu desktop machine. So I know it was only a few things, but we did it on both flavors of Linux for desktop and server, and those are some of the most important things I think to do when you start up a new machine, especially if it's public facing or it's a VPS. A lot of my videos I talk about using VPSs to host some of the services, I know a lot of people do it for their home labs because they don't have the hardware in their house. I know people in my, de my Discord server talk about how they use VPSs and they're always asking about it, so this is some of the most important things to do when you get a new machine to lock it down and secure it. You could also add the firewall rules. I've talked about that in one of my other videos. I'll drop a link below. It's in the video of Fail Demand and how to set up the firewall rules. So you could also do that as well, but these are mostly for private machines. So setting up the firewall rules isn't really needed. But if you are on a public facing machine or on a VPS, setting the firewall rules is really important. Changing the user accounts and make sure everything up to date is the best way to keep the machine secure. So I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, make sure to drop a like, a subscribe, Maybe drop a comment on something that you do when you do a fresh install of Ubuntu. I know some people like to install WGET or CURL or maybe some of those other packages. And uh, let's just drop a comment and talk about it in the comments. See what else everybody installs. Maybe we can do this again so we can get the, uh, the must-haves for setting up a Ubuntu machine. And I'll revisit this topic after we get some more info on it. I appreciate everybody for watching. I do have a Discord server, so make sure to check out the link below and join it up. We always chat in there about different projects, or if people have questions, we try to help each other out. And uh, I appreciate everybody for watching. I'll see you in the next video.